Today, I wanted to talk a little bit about the, the models and the algorithms we use for planning under uncertainty for robots. So how robots make decisions when the world is against them. The world's always against robots. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's tricky. <laughs> sure. Probably the best place to think about, or the best place to start, is a shortest path algorithm. So I, I think that's, I'm, I'm going to try and draw it, um, just to warm up the drawing. Um, so you can imagine that you're starting off at uh, home, and you're trying to get to work. And I should say that this is a, an example I've stolen from a, a talk I saw a few years ago, and I'll, I'll give you the, the, the acknowledgements for that later. But you've got, let's say, the simplest shortest path problem. You've only got one action, so you can go by bike, and that might take you 45 minutes. And you can go by car, and that might take you, let's say, 30 minutes. And you could go by train, and maybe that takes you 35. This is a kind of a standard decision-making problem, right? We've got two states, so our states are being at home or being at work, and we've got three actions. So we can go by bike, we can go by car, or we can go by train. We use these kind of, sort of state transition models everywhere for robotics. So if I'm programming a robot to pick something up or navigate between it in a map, last time we were together, we were looking at robots navigating through these graphs, and we, we turn those graphs into these kind of decision problems as well. So this is a, a kind of a model you could use to decide, well, what route do I use to get to work? Uh, and in this case, if we're trying to minimize time or minimize cost, then we would take the, the car option, which is 30. I'm going to do my teacher thing. What's the, what's the problem with this model? It's too simple, right? It's, it's too simple. So it doesn't reflect the fact that life is just, yeah, the world can be against you. So the world can be uncertain. So the standard thing we do in robotics is we take these de what we call deterministic models. So this is a model where the outcome is fully determined by the state you're in, so you know where you're going to be. Um, and we can say, well, we can actually we can make them more complicated. We want to reflect the, the uncertainty. So I'll draw a kind of a big version first, and we, we can think about that. So we imagine we take our action, which we might call car, and that's still going to cost us 30, or it's going to take 30 minutes, right? That's my planning model. This is how we're going to model the world. But then what we're going to think about is actually there are going to be different outcomes. So when I execute this action, so when I perform that action in the world, I can still only end up in one of three different states. But they might be different traffic levels. So it might be light, medium, and heavy. That's kind of imagining. I've got in my car. I've chosen to take my car to work. I've driven a little way and I hit the motorway or whatever and it's, it's one of these traffic states. And then I can go to work from that. But what we could imagine is when we move out of those states, it's going to take us a different amount of time. So what we might do is we might use that to change our model. So this is the basic idea and what we would do is we'd assign different probabilities. We might say 20% of the time or 0.2, the traffic's light, 70% of the time, it's medium, 10% of the time, or probability of 0.1, there's heavy traffic. So this is reflecting some of that uncertainty, some of that complexity in the world. This is kind of the standard action model we'd use. And when we use action models like this, this is called a Markov decision process. So a Markov decision process is states and actions, just like a shortest path problem, except now when I take my action, there's a probability distribution over the, 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 the outcomes I can reach. I think we do. Markov sometimes talks about with tax, isn't it? Is that right? Yeah, so the Markov is a probabilistic assumption. When you've got a state, it doesn't need actions, right? It can just be state transition, excuse me, state transition systems. And what we do is a Markov assumption says the probability of an outcome only depends on the current state. So I, it doesn't matter the history, it doesn't matter what I was doing before I ch chose to leave home. The only thing that determines that probability is the action I'm taking right now. To be more formal, you can think of that as a sort of first order Markov system, and you can have a second order Markov system which says the, it, only the current state and the previous state um, determine my probabilities. But in general, if you think of something like a Markov chain, if you're doing text processing, you can think about word generation following probability distributions, and there you can think of like one step, so if I give you the, there's a probability of getting cat. Or if, you, if I give you I am the, then you get a probability of getting something different. And if you take that whole history, so if you make a kind of, I think that would be a third order Markov assumption, you'd get a different probability distribution over the word you'd get next. I'm desperate to say walrus there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cuckoo, cuckoo. Um, right, so that's our kind of action, <laughs> that's our action model. And so we can take this action model, we can stick it into the, the, the graph we had before, the, the process we had before. So let's set this up again. I'm going to draw that little arrow at the top that means this is our initial state. So just like a shortest path problem, we're going to start from somewhere. And we typically do this in robotics because our robot has to be somewhere when it starts thinking. And we're going to make our whole world a bit more complex. So I can either go to the railway, 
I can go by car, I can go by bike. So these, these actions now really are reflecting the choices I'm going to make to start with. So not necessarily getting on and doing that, but sort of making the decision that this is what I want to do and maybe going to that form of transport. So now car is going to take one. This is me leaving the house and going to, to my parking space and finding my car. The railway, maybe I have to walk a bit further to get to the railway. So that'll be a cost of two. And then we can start to put these, these um, actions in. So actually these arrows should be dots. And I can put in the, the action that we had before where we have different traffic levels. So light, we've got medium. I'm going to start abbreviating these things because my handwriting is atrocious and will take forever just watching me write words or heavy. And then down at the bottom down here, we're going to have work. And I'm purposely doing two circles here because we've got this, this state transition system. We have our initial state with the arrow coming in. And I do these two rings to mean this is where we want to end up. We call this an absorbing state. There's no, <laughs> there's no way to get out of it when you're there. And as this is work, that's a little bit depressing. But there we go. And then we might have an action called drive. So our drive action is going to be deterministic in that I can take it and it always takes me to work, but I can only take it in certain states. So I can only take it once I'm in my car. So I'm only allowed to drive then. And we can use this now to model the fact that we might get different durations of travel. So let's say that heavy traffic, it takes me 70 minutes to get to work in heavy traffic, 30 in medium, 20 minutes in light. And I think we had these probabilities of 0 0.2, 0 0.7 and 0 0.1. So this shows me that if I go by car, I get some probability of these different traffic levels. And once I've experienced that traffic level, there's no turning back. I have to follow the car. I have to follow that action choice. So use the car to get to work. And it might take a different amount of time. We're going to say here, the bike is deterministic. So if I'm on a bike, I'm fully in control of the duration it takes me. So that will take 45 minutes. So it's further by bike, but there's no uncertainty. And that could be interesting later. In this example, uh, we can say that when I go to the railway station, well, maybe 90% of the time, <laughs> which seems quite unlikely, the, tra the train is there. It's ready to go. And then it takes me, I've got an action which we'll call relax, because once we're on the train, we're happy. And that's going to take me let's say 35 to get to work. And then 10% of the time, I have to wait. So I'm in the waiting room. And then from the waiting room, I get to wait. And then 90% of the time, the train comes. 10% of the time, I get to wait again. So what's interesting here is there's a kind of notion of a time step. You can start to imagine that I'm, I'm looping. Um, I wait, the train comes. I wait, the train doesn't come. And I, I repeat that. And of course, if I get stuck in the waiting room for too long, I could also choose to go home. And what's nice about that is then I get to make another choice. So that might cost me two. My waiting, maybe I wait for three minutes each time. So now I've got this big graph. And this is the Markov decision process. So this is a process because I'm going through a sequence of steps. At each step, I have to take a choice over what action to perform. And then that evolves the state. So it changes the state I'm in. And we have different probabilities of reaching, reaching different states. That's kind of still, in some sense, we can think about this as the shortest path algorithm. But instead of a shortest path, we call this a stochastic shortest path. Because what we want to do is reach our goal. So we're still trying to reach our goal. But now we're dealing with the uncertainty as well. This is a model. This describes the choices your agent could have. So this is the choices you might have when you're going to work. We could imagine I'm building an autonomous vehicle and this is, you know, it's an autonomous taxi system and it has to decide how to take you to work. These kind of models really capture what we, the decision, you know, a decision making part of artificial intelligence, whether that's robotics, whether that's chatbots, all sorts of stuff. Um, so the next question is really, how do we, how do we solve this? And there's, there's two answers or there's two parts to that answer. The first thing is, what does the solution look like? The second bit is, is what, what algorithm do we use? When you say, what does it look like? you mean, as in, is it? Is it just a simple number or is that what you mean? Yeah, well, so in the, the, okay, what structure does the solution have? So if it was a shortest path problem, the, the solution is a path, right? It's because it, and, and that's a sequence of the actions you will take from start to finish. Um, but in, in, a, in an MDP, in a Markov decision process, we can't use a path because when I take a step, the world changes probabilistically, stochastically. So I, I don't know what world, I'm, what state I'm going to end up in. So instead of a path, we have what's called a policy. So a policy is a lookup table that just says, when you're in this state, take this action. 
Um, and that state could be the states from the problem, or we could even augment them. So as, the, as these models get more complex, we might add extra information into the state. We could add the time of day, we could add um, the, you know, how much time is remaining before some kind of deadline, um, how many times we've waited in the waiting room might be interesting. You, could, you can add extra, extra up to your state to help you make decisions. But in general, the policy, rather than just being a straight line plan, a sequence of actions, it's going to be a lookup table that says, Typically, what is the optimal action, so what is the best action to take to achieve a particular specification, so a particular goal that you're trying to reach, um, when you're in this state. Um, and you can think of, for MDPs, there's all sorts of, there's a very rich space of specifications. The most common one for something like this, for a stochastic shortest path problem, is to minimise the expected cost to goal. So the, the expected cost is the average cost. So if, I get, if I'm going to work you know, every day for the rest of my life and I have these, these choices, um, then actually having the expected, so the average cost kind of makes sense because I get to, make this, I get to execute the policy for this, this problem lots and lots of times. Sometimes I do well, sometimes I do badly, but all of that kind of evens out over the time. Um, so we could, we could think about that to start with. Um, so my, my goal is to get to work. Uh, my cost is the time. So what I want to do is minimise the cost to get, get to, um, to get to the goal. And so I need an algorithm that's going to compute the, the cost of the, so we're thinking about the cost, the expected cost of the whole policy starting from the initial state, which is going to be similar in effect thinking about the average cost of a path from the start to the end, or the cost of the average path, not the average cost of the path, the other way around, because the paths change because of the probabilities. The way we solve this is with something called a, a Bellman equation. So the Bellman equation describes how good a particular action choice is. So we need to think about the different action choices available to us in a state, and we use those. We, we kind of value those choices, and those the, the, we basically pick the best action, which in this case will be the, the action with the lowest cost, and we put that in the policy. We should also talk about why we can't use things like A star or Dijkstra. A star and Dijkstra deal with deterministic problems, so they, they deal with state transition systems that might look a little bit like this, but they assume the actions are purely deterministic. So they produce paths from start to finish. So there's no probability involved. There's no probability yet. So they, they, they assume that when they take an action, the world changes in the way that the action uh, behaves. There are kind of analogs for some of these things in the probabilistic world. And the, the algorithm we'll get to is, is it has similarities to the way Dijkstra's algorithm works. Um, and actually, A star is a heuristic search algorithm. There are also heuristic search algorithms for Markov decision processes. So there are classes of algorithms that fit well together. Um, but for this, we can't take Dijkstra or A star and say, you know, off we go. If you're thinking about just the average cost, then everything gets a lot easier. And we, what we're basically going to do is take all the, the different... Act, the, we're going to mu multiply the cost by the probability of getting that cost, sum them up, and that tells us really how good that action is. So it's just kind of like, it, it's almost like taking something like a, a, a normal shortest path algorithm and collapsing all of the actions into an average action. But we have to do that recursively because that, each action takes me to another state where I can apply a different, I have to make a different action choice. So we have this recursive problem of my actions are only as good as the states they reach. That's the kind of recursive part, but I also have to think about the fact that that happens probabilistically, which is where this sort of averaging comes in for the, for the expected cost. We can also think about trying to limit the probability of success or failure or the probability of certain extremes. I think we can talk about that later, um, the algorithms for that are much, much harder, but, but, but super interesting. And actually, th those are the things you care about when your boss says you have to be here by 10 o'clock for a meeting or your patience runs out if your commute is longer than 45 minutes. So real world problems are much, I think real world problems are better captured by those richer specifications. I mean, it looks to me like the waiting room is the sort of, is the kicker here because it's potentially, you know, quite a bit more complicated, right? Yeah. So if you went down the train route, then you've got multiple kind of nests of that, right? Mm. So it, it depends on what problem you're trying to solve. So if we're solving expected value, if I build a policy to only optimise the average cost of a journey, then the best choice is car. The, I think it's something like 33 or 34 uh, minutes, uh, which is faster than bike, which is 45. And I think train comes in somewhere over 35 or over 37 on average. So it's, it's more expensive than car, cheaper than bike. But yeah, the average thing is interesting, and this is where, where these models become fun for robotics and for problem solving, which is your, by choosing the car, 10% of your journeys take you 71 minutes 
right? Which would make you extremely late for work if in general you should be taking 30 to 40. So you, you, if you only solve for average value, then 10% of the time you're very late. And so what you can think about in these kind of problems is, is different, what we call either specifications or objective functions. So if you're doing some optimization, you typically think about the optimization, the objective function, the thing you're minimizing or maximizing. And in, in when we do planning or decision making with these kind of models, we often phrase it as a specification, the, which is a mixture of the goal you're trying to reach and the constraints you're trying to put on it. Yeah, so for instance, you're trying to do it in the shortest possible time, but it should never be longer than. Yeah, that, that, that's a perfect example. So if you try to do it in, if you, if you say it can never be longer than, um, minutes, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna say 60, because the mass, I remember the, ma <laughs> the mass for this. So if you say it for 60, well, you always take the bike, because every, everything else, there's a chance the car takes 70, um, there is a non-zero probability that the train also takes longer than 60. So there is a non-zero probability in the, if you take the train, you're waiting forever, effectively. Um, but the bike is deterministic. But the bike is long. So it's guaranteed to be less than 60, but it's guaranteed to always be 45. So you're always going to be later than you want to be. Um, the, the kind of optimal strategy, I think, to get in under 60... Um, guaranteed to get under 60 whilst minimising time is to go to the train, wait for three cycles wait for, yeah. and then go home and, and, and get the bike. So effectively you can think about the chance of getting the train within three cycles and then if you go any longer then it's going to take you longer, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll violate your deadline so then you go back to get the bike. But that's a, those kind of solution mechanisms are really... I think I've actually been in that situation. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, it happens a lot, particularly kind of post-COVID, where you're like, oh, I could work from home, but I should be there. Oh, the train's late. I'm just going to go back and put my pyjamas back on. But you need to think about what we call an augmented state space. You put the time that you've waited into the state, and that allows your policy to include actions. You know, I'm, you think about actions that I'm in the waiting room and time is now at nine minutes. And those things that you do in your head going, oh, God, I've waited this long. Maybe the train's never coming. You can factor those into the, the decision making as well. If you know exactly where you want the robot to go, you take the 3D map and then you manually annotate it with the points. In this case, we're doing it entirely. Well, in a, the, the graph is built autonomously using that, that, that Lego representation. So you say, what we call soft matter computing, in, area, in particular, what we want uh, is